Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. It is still Irish Whiskey Month and I am so excited to finally bring you the Red Bristless Stout. I even mentioned this last year on uh, Irish Whiskey Month that I was dying to try this one and I've been looking for it for several years at this point. So tell me, is this readily available in your area or uh, does it just suck up here? <laughs> but whatever, I had to drive to New Hampshire to get this bottle. So. I will just tell you that if you are not experienced with Redbreast, you are missing out on some of the best Irish whiskey that is on the market, just without a doubt. There are, of course, some premium brands that are probably going to be better, but when you're looking for consistency of something absolutely delicious, Redbreast is one of the safest bets that I could recommend. So when I knew that there was one that I hadn't really reviewed here, I had to get my hands on it. But all of the red breasts, except for like one or two special editions, are finished with sherry. But this is the only one that's finished in uh, sherry butts from Bodega La Stau. And if you don't know what a bodega is, basically it's a fancy term that means like a wine store or a wine cellar, but mostly it's like a Spanish thing. Bodega La Stau is located in Jerez de la Frontera, a city in the Andalusia region of southern Spain. The Listau edition is actually this 12 year old here that has been dumped into first fill sherry butts that used to hold either the Oloroso or the Pedro Jimenez from Listau. And they were very much known for their wines. So you're basically taking something delicious already and then adding it to something just really special. Now, this whole process actually gives quite a bit of flavor. If you've never had a sherry finished scotch, for example, or Irish whiskey, but there's many more scotches. If you've ever had one, you'll know how much of a difference that adding the, something to an ex sherry barrel will give it. It tastes like fruit a lot, but more so on the nose, it's gonna smell incredible. So let's talk real quick about like kind of what's in this bottle and then we'll go into the nosing and the tasting. This whiskey is bottled at 46%, which puts it 6% higher than the regular 12 year. So not a huge deal, but enough to be noticeable and enough to make it kind of that premium product. It is made from malted and unmalted barley. It's triple distilled and it's non-chill filtered, which means that basically they're leaving everything in there. Some people will say that when you chill filter something, it's going to change the mouthfeel. And I think there's some evidence to that, but I also think it's kind of varies from person to person, so I wouldn't worry too much about it, but it's typically better to see non-chill filtered. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the nosing and the tasting here. Oh man, that smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I truly love anything sherry finished. Um, obviously, there are some that don't do it well, but if you do a nice sherry whiskey, it is one of the best smells, in my opinion, that, that I can think of. So in this one, you're often not going to get a huge variety of nosing notes when you sherry finish something because it starts to smell like sherry. So what does that mean, though? In this case, in this case, it smells of apples, it smells of oak, it smells very sweet, um, kind of like dried fruits that are kind of coated in, in little granules of sugar. Um, hopefully that translates to anybody outside of the, you know, United States. <laughs> so we're so unhealthy. But other than that, it's it smells extremely sweet, it's fruity, it is oak, it is raisins and dates. Um, maybe like some figs, like a Fig Newton kind of, but I hesitate to say Fig Newton, so I guess I'll just say Fig because it doesn't have that shortbread or whatever that stuff is, the, the Newton. <laughs> so let's go ahead and have a taste of this. Cheers. Hmm. Fun fact, right now I'm about 20 minutes away from Newton, Massachusetts, which is where Fig Newtons were created. Oh, that tastes really smooth, really smooth. I'm gonna have another sip of that because of course I had to tell you about the Fig Newtons because that's what's really important here. <laughs> mm. Oh man, it is so smooth. One bad thing though, the finish goes away real fast for me. I don't really ding it too much. Finishes are amazing when they happen, but I don't, I consider a long finish like bonus points. I don't necessarily kind of mark it off for that. So. When I taste this, um, the mouthfeel here is is kind of a thinner than I would have expected. Um, very surprising, actually. But at 46%, you can kind of go both ways. I've had some really, really viscous 46%, so I've had some really thin ones too. I'd say this is in the middle. But as far as flavors go here, um, you're also picking up, again, kind of those raisins and the figs, um, but you're getting some of that green apple. Um, Hmm. 
So this is a flavor I don't get a ton, and I hesitate to say this when I taste it on something sherry, because whatever, basically it's, it tastes a little nutty, but more so kind of like an almonds, which only somewhat recently have I really learned what the taste of marzipan tastes like, and that is probably the best way to describe it. It is sugary and sweet with a hint of that nutty flavor from marzipan. So I would, I would put that one on there. Mm. This is super good. It is not, it, although it is sweet, it is not as sweet as you might be thinking when you think of something triple distilled and then with influence from sherry. It is, it has like the tiniest little bit of kind of that copper pot still remnant going on, which is a good thing. I do like that flavor, but I could see how that might be a little off-putting for somebody. If you're tasting something weird on the finish that you don't recognize, that is likely from the copper pot still. And it, some people like it. I like it. So learn to like it. <laughs> some people like Isla too. I do too. Most people, well, I think a lot of people don't, but mm. okay. Let's talk overall. Um, here's my thing. I, I have two different opinions on this or one opinion, but it's not just like fully. Yes, I love it. Right. So here's what I think because this is hard to get. Um, that means it's always going to be a little bit pricier than say like the 12, but it's also going to change every time that they do put this out. Now, I, contact, I contacted Redbreast a while ago because I simply couldn't find this. And I try not to pull those strings too much of like, hey, I'm a whiskey YouTuber, can you send me a ball? I don't like to pull those strings too much only because I like to try to give like a totally fair review. And when I got with them, I actually offered, I said, I would love to pay for it, but I just can't get it. Can you send me a ball? And they actually even said, oh, we don't have any. <laughs> so I think that they don't have this readily available all the time. And because of that, that's going to kind of ding it a little bit. This is one of their core expressions. It should be on the shelf all the time, in my opinion. Okay, let's talk more about the whiskey, though. Here's the one bad part for it. When I describe this whiskey to you, I bet that you're envisioning something extremely sweet and delicious. And it is delicious, but it is not extremely sweet. In fact, even just right now talking, there's some heat in my throat from that alcohol, which could have been rounded out a little bit better had there been just a tad bit more of that sherry influence. I think it would have been amazing. Um, here's the problem, though. Or, hmm, let's, let's, I don't think there's actually that many more problems. I think, this is what I think. <laughs> I think that if you can find this bottle, just like any other red breast, it will get my recommendation. However, you should be very careful about how much you spend on it. And I'll put the price right here because I forgot to look it up ahead of time. If you see it for over that price, just wait or see if you can find it somewhere else. Because I, I simply don't think you should overpay for this whiskey because if memory serves, it's close in price to the cast strength, which I'll put over here so you can see if I'm right or not. And the cast strength I would buy 10 out of 10 times over the list now. The Lestau is interesting and fun, and I love that they played around with the triple distill because it took the flavor pretty well. But when I think about certain sherried whiskeys that I have, um, like sherried scotches, those are better, you know, or, or more so what I'm looking for in a sherried scotch. A lot of, say, like, um, like a Speyside sherry that's just heavy on the fruit and delicious. That's more what I look for when I buy a sherried whiskey. And I wouldn't say that this is super that. It's more on the darker fruit side, like those raisins and dates and figs, um, rather than strawberries and raspberries and apples. So I, I'm going to probably still give this my rating of a buy it, but it's going to be like a, like a almost hesitant buy it because I don't think this is going to be for everybody. And I do think that the price could be the deciding factor here. So either way, I give it a somewhat enthusiastic uh, buy it with the caveat that if it's sitting next to a 12 cast strength, just buy that one instead. All right. Anyway, thank you everybody for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. I hope you have a great St. Patrick's Day. And uh, yeah, that's it. Check the description for a whole bunch of stuff and I'll see you guys next week on the Whiskey Dictionary. Cheers.